purpose of environmental control systems. It's basically to enable people with physical disabilities to live more independently. Well, how does it work? It really, it's very simple. It enables people to control remotely a wide range of appliances in their environment. You should look upon it really as a, as a slightly more complicated uh, television remote that people can input into this device using their finger and it sends a signal to change the television program. So environmental control systems are that simple. You have a variety of input devices which send a signal to a central controller which in turn sends a signal to the end appliance that you wish to manipulate, switch on, switch off. So that's simply how environmental control systems work. Originally they were hardwired with wires all over the house making them work from A to B but now, of course, the modern technology, they work in all sorts of non-wired non ways, wireless ways, such as infrared, radio frequency or Bluetooth technology. So they're very clean and simple and neat. First, let's look at the input methods. The, the best and simplest way to do it is just like the television remote. Individuals retain finger dexterity and hand function, can access a variety of equipment, so they can simply press a button um, on their iPad or on their controller, which in turn then switches the appliance on or off or adjusts it. Of course, some people can't use their fingers with sufficient dexterity, so there's a variety of other input devices that basically mean as long as you can move one body part coherently, you can control environmental systems. So that could be, for example, people have very weak fingers, so there can be switches that are very, very sensitive to very light touch. They can there's squeeze buttons. There's neck controllers, so if you've got a little bit of movement of neck but not of the arms or legs, you can use uh, movement of your head, for example. These days, of course, there is even more variety of devices, and we can use voice recognition. Voice recognition software is now quite good, and, and we're familiar with it probably in our iPhones. And of course, these days, there is a very useful method for those who really can't talk or use any body part, uh, called eye gaze and that basically is a, a simple device with a camera on say a computer or a computer like device that will monitor your eye direction so you basically look at part of the screen and if you dwell on that part for, for more than a specified period of time it will act as a computer mouse and switch that part of the screen on just like clicking on your mouse at home. So eye gaze technology is very very simple to use and these days very efficient to use. So there's a whole variety of input devices that allow a signal to be sent to the central controller. And from the central controller, you can link to that a whole variety of appliances. Now some appliances can come already incorporating the ability to receive and respond to remote commands, like your TV, which is of course already programmed to receive a signal from your television remote. Hi-Fi's have the same thing. Other um, end product, if you like, will have to have a, a simple adapting device put onto it. So you can put a, a door opener, a small electric motor that opens a door for you. Similarly for windows or curtains, for example. Other appliances need special manufacture, such as a hands-free telephone. Very simple, easy technology that we're all familiar with. So just across the spectrum, what can we use these devices for? And I suppose it can come from uh, a variety of, of uh, important things around the home. Let's look at security first. So it can operate an alarm system, door lock, door intercom. So someone very disabled who can't get out of bed can speak to someone at the door and let them in should they wish to. We can use it, of course, for communication by remote access to the telephone. The device can dial the number and then you can speak to the person by the hands-free telephone. Various, if you like, comfort aspects of the home, such as switching lights on and off, heaters on and off, adjusting an electrical bed all by yourself from the bed. Of course, it's often used for entertainment, such as the TV, the video recorder, the hi-fi, the DVD. And for home control, such as we said, opening doors, opening windows. And of course, these days, very importantly, it can be a device that can operate remotely your computer, so you can access the internet um, and all sorts of other communication devices through the computer. So it's a very simple concept, yet has really significant benefits. One study done uh, recently showed, for example, that environmental control pr provision had increased the independence of those using it. Um, they have felt better, they have more self-worth, much more control of their environment, of course. 25% of the people who used it were unable to live alone. 
25% avoided admission into institutional care, and 80% plus reported less need for daycare assistance. So that's a really big help. And if we just look at the benefits, the annual cost of institutional care, for example, let's say, conservatively, is about £30,000 a year. The capital cost of this sort of equipment, on average, is a few thousand pounds, three or four thousand pounds. It can be more in people with complex disability. And it costs a little bit, of course, to maintain it and support people in their home if it goes wrong. But roughly speaking, the annual cost of this sort of equipment is a few thousand pounds, five or six thousand pounds, which compares to 30,000 pounds of institutional care, plus giving people that security and better management of their home environment and their more feeling of independence, you're not dependent on someone uh, to do things for you. Just as an example, let's take um, Clarence Adu, who's now 43, and he was seriously injured in a road traffic accident in 1995. And as a result of that, he had a high cervical spinal cord lesion at C4. That means he has very little movement of his hands and arms, no movement of the legs. So after a period of rehabilitation, he came back home into his own adapted house. But he wanted to be very independent, quite understandably. And so he was fitted with an environmental control system. And just as an example to show you what he does, he has a, his own power wheelchair and he controls his wheelchair with a chin joystick on a swing away arm. So when he doesn't want to, to move the chair, the arm will swing out of the way. Now that, that arm is controlled using a simple switch operated by rear head movement. So he just moves his head gently backwards that switches the switch and the arm of the wheelchair swings away from him. He reverses that to bring it back to him and then he can use his chin to control the movement of the chair. He was fitted with a particular type of environmental control system called the SRS Intellect and uh, he uses that for a suck blow switch. So you can suck into the switch or blow into the switch to switch things on or off. And he uses that for a whole variety of purposes. Home security, communication, such as a telephone, uh, access to the home, access within the home, such as operating his uh, through-floor lift. He uses it for entertainment because he's actually a musician and has a very large uh, collection of, of CDs and DVDs, and he uses it to access his computer, all through the suck blow switch. He obviously uses it for a simple environment around the home, such as switching on lights, uh, moving curtains, opening doors, etc. So it's made a really big difference to Clarence who is now living really quite independently with a high level of disability with much less input from external carers. So it's made a big difference to his life by a simple addition of an environmental control system.